this video is about basic introduction to manipulation in DNA which we call as recombinant DNA technology so let us start understanding that what recombinant DNA technology is and what are the different components or steps involved in RDT recombinant DNA technology begins with isolation of nucleic acid from a source of DNA suppose we want to manipulate the DNA of human being we must isolate the total genomic DNA from a human cell so that will be considered as source of DNA and we will use conventional practice of DNA isolation there are different methods of DNA isolation that can be used to isolate the DNA one of the most common method used for isolation of DNA is phenol chloroform isopropanol method apart from that silica based methods are also used for DNA isolation now once the DNA isolation has been done and its quality has been checked we may now be interested to find out specific region of the DNA which we want to recombine with the foreign DNA and that foreign that specific piece of DNA which we are interested in in manipulating is known as gene of interest there are different ways of gene identification we can do hybridization we can do PCR based detection or probe based detection once we are done with this step and we are having our gene of interest isolated in parallel to this we will also be developing another piece of DNA for doing recombinant DNA technology and the second piece of DNA will generally come from a variety of sources like bacterial plasmids or it may be viral vectors or various other things which together known as vehicles or vector so vector is mainly required to make the foreign DNA compatible into the host and design of this vector or selection of already designed vectors is critical during the manipulation of DNA so once we are done with this step vector selection or vector design the next important step is to mix these two type of material one that was gene of interest another that was vehicle DNA we take them in specific quantities based on their stoichiometric ratio and we mix them up before actually mixing or even after mixing we can do a step that is known as breaking down by using restriction enzymes one important thing that we should note here in order to join two pieces of DNA we must first make their ends compatible so this process of restriction digestion will actually make the ends of two type of molecules compatible we will cut the vehicle DNA by same type of restriction enzyme in, in a manner in which the gene of interest will be cut so ends of gene of interest will be compatible with the ends of cleaved vector and therefore the restriction digestion will help in this process in making the ends compatible which can later be joined together and the process of joining them together is known as ligation this is done with the help of ligase enzyme whereas restriction digestion is done with the help of a variety of restriction endonucleases which are of type 2 and they are specific in recognizing a DNA sequence and they are able to cleave within that recognized DNA sequence now once the ligation is done these two pieces one of the vector and another of gene of interest are ligated together to give rise to a new piece of DNA which is known as recombinant DNA this recombinant DNA is not capable of replicating itself or dividing itself or surviving alone if it is not transferred into a living cell so next important step is transformation or the transfer of this DNA <coughs> into a host cell this is transferred into a host cell we should remember that host cell can be of different type it may be a bacterial or prokaryotic cell it may be eukaryotic cell such as yeast it may be insect cell line or human cell line so variety of host cells can be used for the process of transformation but we should also remember one more step here that is when we are transforming this molecule into host cell we might encounter several situations where some cells will not be transformed successfully or some cells may be transformed with the wrong construct so 
there have to be some very stringent selection strategies or methods which are particularly based on choice of different kind of selectable and scorable markers which allow only specific type of cells which contain our gene of interest to be selected on growth media. Now this is the overall process of manipulation of DNA. What to do with this now? There are three important applications of this whole process. One important application is that we can do cloning of our gene of interest. So the gene that we identified in the step one can actually be cloned because this cell host cell will divide a number of time and this vector will also divide a number of time. So we can have a very large number of genes to be cloned in a specific uh, in a very small amount of time as well as at a very low cost so this is a low cost method for amplifying a foreign dna in that case the vector that will be used is known as cloning vector but if we slightly modify the cloning vector to make sure that the gene of interest can also express itself then that vector is known as expression vector and we can have another strategy or another application of this recombinant DNA technology is uh, expression of this foreign DNA into a specific host cell. So this expression will involve transcription of the foreign gene, formation of mRNA and then formation of specific protein. Now this may be commercially important because uh, we may be able to synthesize a large number of human proteins into bacterial cells. The advantage is that bacterial cells or the smaller organisms will proliferate much faster and in that situation any human protein or protein of interest for pharmaceutical purpose can be produced at a very low cost and at a commercial uh, may have a commercial scope. So this is another application of recombinant DNA technology. The third important application by doing the same process, since we are able to transform a single cell, if we do this transformation into a eukaryotic cell and we are capable of transforming this cell into an organism, then we can create a complete recombinant organism. So third application after cloning and expression is transgenic organisms and both plants as well as Animals can be created by transgenic strategy. So we have transgenic plants, lot of transgenic plants are already available, they have been commercialized as well as large number of animals which are transgenic have also been commercialized. So this is the overview of recombinant DNA technology or manipulation of DNA. The points which have been highlighted here with the dot, they are individual topics and we can have individual discussion on all these topics. We have a separate uh, discussion on DNA isolation, on identification of genes. Uh, we will have a problem solving discussion on restriction digestion, uh, ligation, then transformation and selection strategies make a different topic of discussion. Whereas vector selection and design of vectors, variety of vectors will be a different topic. And then all these applications will be different topic. So I hope this makes you clear about what is manipulation of DNA and what is overview of recombinant DNA technology. Thank you for watching.